Hey everybody, it's Crystal Ann Compton. How are you doing? I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. In this video, I'm gonna be answering one of the questions that came in several weeks ago when I made a video, Ask Me Anything, and y'all did. And I've made, I think, two or three videos from some of the questions, but there are a lot and I really, they're so good and I'm going to be going through them and sharing these videos because I think a lot of those questions are questions that everybody has or a great deal of us have, especially as spiritual people. So let me share the first question with you. Jill asks, do you think we are coming to an end of times as it were? There seems to be a lot of planetary discord in the world and it appears there is a more distinct divide between vibrational planes held by people. So let me answer, that's a great question. First part is, do I think that we are coming to an end of times? I do not. Certainly not in the way that religion would use the end of times. End of times in terms of Christianity typically involves the tribulation, which is a seven-year period of, well, tribulation during which the Antichrist arises to power and after which there's a terrible battle in the Valley of Megiddo between good and evil and then Jesus Christ returns to reign for a thousand years along with the elect which are, I guess, the most awesome Christians ever. <laughs> and they get, to, they, get to, they get to reign with Jesus in the New Jerusalem. I don't believe that. I think all of that, which was written by John of Patmos, was probably as a result of a psychedelic trip, which I can dig. But I think it's more metaphorical than anything. I think when you have prophecies like that, especially when they're very ornate in this way and descriptive, and almost feeling mythological, that it's easy to read into those things what you what you kind of want to happen in terms of an outcome. And unfortunately, with a lot of religion, there always seems the outcome is something that's terrible for everybody that hurts a lot of people. Most people don't get it right, and therefore you have to be purged. It seems to always go that way. And I, I don't really personally see revelations like that. I think there's a lot of cool allegory, allegory there, but we won't get to it. So in terms of the traditional meaning of end of times, no, I don't believe that we are heading into a time like that. However, I do think we are up against... Let me remove this for you guys. I do believe that we are up against a shift, a definite shift that is taking, well, we have been shifting for quite some time now. And when we, what I mean by shifting is we've been shifting in frequency and this is compulsory, meaning we cannot avoid doing so. And that's because there's some energetic momentum involved here, meaning we are moving towards something. And you can ask a lot of different people what that might be. They'd have some different answers. But what I'm telling you, I believe is that we're moving toward a different dimensional reality and construct. We are presently in 3D reality, but we're moving toward 5D. And, and in doing so, we are inhabiting a lot of the time and also experiencing 4D, which is this kind of wild card dimension that causes us to see, to feel in different ways. Uh, those of us who are having spontaneous awakenings, for example, those of us who are being visited at night by little beings, those of us who are starting to see colors around people, those of us who are starting to have deep understanding spiritually, that's because we are being pulled in the direction of 5D, but we're also going through 4D on the way there, which is where a lot of this type of phenomena takes place. That's happening. We are existing now in the higher octaves of three-dimensional reality. Let me just explain this quickly. If you haven't seen my video on YouTube called The Dimensions of Light, you might want to because it's really fascinating. It's a bit long, but it's really, really powerful. And I talk a lot about octaves there, but essentially we have this dimension in which we are all existing because we share a common frequency and vibration. If we didn't have this frequency or vibration, we could not be here in 3D reality. And on both ends of the spectrum, there are gradations, if you will. There are sub-dimensional spaces that have a frequency which is anchored in the dominant frequency of 3D reality, but it's also different and shifted. And I won't go into the technicalities of that, but there's a lower octave range where people here in 3D reality are hanging out in negative frequencies. They're more apt to cheat. They're more apt to thieve. They're more apt to murder. They're more apt to be corrupt. That's happening in 3D with all of us, but it's happening in these lower octaves because that's where their consciousness is dwelling. And then there's these higher octaves. These octaves are 
for example, represented by people who are having these transcendent experiences, who are making these divine spiritual connections, who are opening up and having their consciousness expanded, sometimes just totally blown out. That's happening here in 3D reality, but it's happening in these higher octaves, which are bleeding into 4D, 5D. I know that's cosmic and complex, but I also know a lot of you guys can dig it. And there's this trend, there's this pulling along of all of us in 3D into the higher dimensions because the occupants, the energies of 5D, 60, 70 light beings, but also you and I dwell there, not for nothing. All of them are also shifting and ascending and changing their energetic and spiritual structure. So we are, in a mandated way, shifting and changing. It's going to happen whether we like it or not. And that's kind of coming to a head right about now, I would say over the next mm, century, okay, less, maybe more, we are going to have cracked open expansive consciousness. We are going to be making decisions as a global consciousness in a very different way. But I, I want to say this is fluid. Always future is fluid. Future is always very flexible. It's based on what we do in the presence heavily. And so if as a collective consciousness, if as humanity and we are all one, we decide that we are at this fork in the road and we can either go down this road or we can go down that road. If we decide to take a path, well, that is what we will reap. And it seems pretty clear to a lot of us, no? What those two paths are. The one path is the path to higher understanding, to spiritual connection, to peace and love and acceptance of all. To a turning away from that which divides us and makes us different and a turning towards that which unites us and makes us the same. For indeed, we come from the one. We are an expression of the one and we are one with all. doesn't matter how different we are. We are still the one. And so there is this contingent of consciousness, these people who are open, who are moving in that direction and want that. And then there are others who are not I don't want to, it's so, it sounds judgmental to say they're not open, they don't understand. It's not that, they're just not vibrating there, get it? They're not, the frequency is not there. And they're trending toward where the rest of this consciousness is going. And to me, that looks like some high strangeness. High strangeness is at the door of humanity. Things like um, reliance on control by AI, the elites, the 1%. It sounds very conspiracy theory, but we're already seeing the fruits of this happening now, the, the, the grooming of this towards that path from those that would seek for us to go down that road. And so some are trending that way, and then there are others trending in a different way. So your question about there seems to be vibrational discrepancies, well, there is. There is vibrational discrepancies, and there's the there's the expansively conscious or those that seek to have this type of connection. Even the desire for this, the intention for this is meaningful in terms of frequency. And then there are those that are asleep to some degree. They are not awakened to the possibility of what can await. And so they just follow with the trends, the matrix, if you will. Two roads, we stand before both. Which one will we take? But this takes me back also to Neville Goddard. And you, you hear me say this a lot, but it's so powerful because Goddard said, and I believe, and it's mirrored through sacred texts throughout all time, that everything is just you pushed out. Everything. Your husband is just you pushed out. Your community is just you pushed out. Your president is just you pushed out. Your world nature, animals, these are just you pushed out. You are interacting with versions of you, but you are caught up in the illusion of otherness and separateness, us versus them. And you're not seeing that we are actually all one and it's all us, it's all you, it's all me. So we need to wake up to that reality because if we can change the discord within ourselves, our own prejudices, our own bigotries, our own weird ideologies, our own dogmas, if we can untether from these and be open to what spirit has to show us, if we can hook our wagon to the momentum in these higher octaves to higher dimensional consciousness, if we can choose this way and really immerse ourselves in this, then everything becomes us Everything still is us pushed out, but we're now in this higher dimensional consciousness. We're now in this higher understanding. We are now spending time with proximate to source energy. And then everything we encounter is just us pushed out from there, the source. 
So it all begins with us. We can look externally, which I see, you know, you do, I do, we all do. We're living in this matrix. And you can get caught up with the identification of that. And when it gets particularly dark, when it gets particularly chaotic, return to yourself and find the discord, find the imbalance, that which is out of alignment with source energy or creator energy or higher self, find where that is within you. This is called the work. The work never ends, ever. The work is with us until we die. It's just a matter of, it's just a matter of turning the dial and getting more and more and more in perfect alignment until we pass from this reality into the next. That's the work and we are all doing it. If you're experiencing life in a separate way, there's a separateness that exists within you. There's a belief somewhere within you that there is an otherness that exists. Maybe you're the other and so you see it in everyone else. Everything is just you pushed out. To experience heaven on earth right now, be heaven. Not don't not be in heaven, as if it's a location outside of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is within. Be heaven here now. Do what you can through disciplines and practices to align to the reality of who you are as a divine being, because then your world is you pushed out. Your world is divine. Your world is sovereign. Your world is beautiful. For when we feel the beauty within ourselves, when we identify and feel and run the energy of our divine nature, all is divine. All is divine. Are we in the end times? No. No. I don't believe so. I could be wrong. I think we are at a turning point. Choose you this day who you will serve. Can you dig it? Choose you this day who you will serve. And this is not about gods. This is not about ideology. It's about love. It's about connection. That's what it's about. That's who we have to choose to serve. And to serve means we are that. We embody that. We vibrate that. We walk around the planet being that. That's our orientation. That's how we see the world. And the world is just us pushed out. Are there vibrational discrepancies? Yes, because we have people existing in this dimension in different octaves doing different things. But you can change that. You can change the reality of all of that by changing what lies within. It's that simple and that complicated. Simple doesn't ever mean easy, I've noticed. (laughs) Simple is like, that's a simple principle, but it's not easy to implement. But that is the work. Thank you for such a good question. Thank you for allowing me to answer it. And I hope all of you have a beautiful rest of your day. I got nothing but love for you, baby. Join me this year at the 2019 Bliss Retreat in beautiful Loveland, Colorado. The Bliss Retreat is a four-night, five-day, blissed-out extravaganza where there will be sacred ceremonies, spiritual workshops, and nightly services with me, Crystal Ann Compton. Go to theblissretreat.org to learn more. I hope to see you there.